Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. Welcome to the fifth and final video in the series on Alteryx for Excel users. In this video, I'm going to go through using joins inside Alteryx and how it compares to some of the data joins and preparation you would do inside Excel. So what I've got in this example is a set of purchase orders, and I'm going to go through the example of doing a union where we have two identical data sets in structure, although the individual data might differ from file to file or it should differ, the structure of the data between the two files are the same, meaning the columns are identical, but the underlying data is different. Then I'm going to go into replicating a VLOOKUP inside Alteryx and how you would normally do it in Excel and what it looks like in Alteryx. And then the last thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about a reorder using the SELECT tool. I've done it in the previous videos, but I haven't really called out why I'm doing it and the method behind it. So uh, that's where I'll go with the reorder tool. So jumping into the purchase orders data, I've got data for two different years here which uh, sometimes happens, and in my case, I'll get Excel files that contain uh, data for a year, and they'll give me four or five files uh, going back several years. So I'm just gonna use data from 2011 and 2012. I can see the 2011 file has order dates for August of 2011, and the 2012 file has order dates for August, September of 2012. So what I want to do is put those two files together into one file. And the structure of these two files is exactly the same. It has the same number of columns, same data types. That's important when doing a union and using the union tool. So going over to the join menu, I'm pulling in the union tool, and I'm going to let it snap in here to one of the files, and then I'm going to drag it uh, here. Uh, I haven't used this before in any of the previous videos, but I'm using a container tool to show you where I'm doing the joins. Uh, so if that doesn't look familiar, that's what that tool is. Uh, the union tool has a little bit different connector on the left side, and here it's indicating that it can take in uh, more than one connection. So I'm going to pull in the connection from the second purchase order file. And then when I click on the tool, It'll let me configure how I want the union to work. Uh, in this case, I'm choosing auto configure by name because the name of the fields or the columns of data are exactly the same in both files. I could auto configure it by position where I don't really care what the names of the columns are in the Excel spreadsheet. It just does it by column in Excel. It would be A, B, C, D, and so on. Uh, I can also manually configure it. I'm going to do it by name since I know that that's going to work properly. Everything else I'm going to leave the same, and then we're going to right-click on the tool and choose Add a Browse After just so I can see what these two files look like. And I've I've roughly got I've got 94 records, I believe, in each file. Should be exactly the same. <clears throat> so let's make sure when they both come out on the end that uh, I have 188, the 94 plus the 94. All right, and then we'll just look through them real quick here and see that 2011 is listed. When I get to record 95, then I should see that 2012 starts. All right, so that looks, that looks good to me. So a simple union function when I have more, or union tool, uh, when I have more than one Excel file that I want to want to bring together. This would also work if the Excel file had worksheets in it and I, I just duplicate the import, the input here, and instead uh, the table or query is going to be the name of the actual sheet. So I can hit the down arrow here and choose this sheet. So let's say you had an Excel spreadsheet that had five sheets in it and each sheet represented the last five years, I could just pull those sheets in and union them all together into one complete data set. That's another way of doing it, another option you have. So lots of flexibility in the way that those tools work. All right, so that's the union example. I'm gonna shrink up my tool container 
really nice. A, it can hide that and it's not going to run anymore. Then I'm going to expand the VLOOKUP example that I have here. So in this case, when I do a VLOOKUP, what I'm really doing is taking a value from one table and then going into another range of data and trying to match that value and then uh, retrieve an associated value. So for, for this data, I've got the purchase order data from 2011. I have an item ID in here. And uh, what I don't have in the item number is the actual item description. That item description isn't listed here. I've, I've taken it out for the sake of this example. It's listed in the input file so I can show you what it looks like, but I've removed it in my select. So what I'm going to do is use the join tool here, and I'm going to join to the left side. Uh, and I'll explain the left and the right here in a moment, uh, the data that just contains the item number. And then my purchase orders data has the item number, but also the description. So you can imagine if this were an Excel spreadsheet, maybe I have another worksheet tab that has a list of all the items or another data ranger table that contains the description. So we're going to attach that to the R input, which is uh, the right, what I'm going to call the right side. So when I click on the tool itself, the join tool, it's going to label the L and the R left and right. And it's only going to let me pull in one input for the left and one input for the right. That's different from the union tool where it let me do multiple inputs. Okay, so it's telling me the types of joins that I can have. So left uh, unjoined uh, output here is going to be all of the items from the left input that don't find a match. I'm going to skip over the inner join here for a minute, the J, and go to the, just the R. So the R on the output is going to be all of the fields, all of the records from the R side of the input that don't have a matching L side, a left side. So basically all the unmatched from the right, and then the L is all the unmatched from the left. A true VLOOKUP then is going to be the join portion, this middle piece. It's really an inner join. So I'm going to go over to join by specific fields here, and we're going to hit the down arrow, and we're going to choose item number. It also happens to be item called item number as the field name on the right input, this right input here. Now, the field names don't have to be the same. They, it could be called item NO period on the left, and then item number with number spelled out, N-U-M-B-E-R. That's fine. It doesn't. The names don't have to match. I can just choose them from the drop-down list. Really, the only thing that has to match is the data type it has to be the same in order for the match to work. All right, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to just do all of the join types, the left, the inner, and the right join for me. I don't have to specify that. It's just going to do it, and then I choose it from the output here. I'm also going to get a label that tells me which input that data item came from. All right, so I'm going to move this just a little bit here so we can see that the right join contained a field called item number already so it's going to be called right underscore item number to keep it unique and then here's the item description listed there so let's go ahead and let's add browses uh, after all of these add all browses and you'll see here's our left only match our right only match and then the inner join match is going to be in the center and then we'll just run our we'll run our workflow here and in this data set, I'm going to have all matches. I made sure that, that the elements were going to match for the sake of doing the VLOOKUP here. So for each item that was looked up, you'll see air, airframe fasteners here as 1122. If I move down, uh, you'll see the electrical connectors as item 3160. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a select out of here. And we're going to add it to the canvas. I'm going to get rid of the browse tool that I have in here. And we're going to reorder the way that this is laid out. And so I'm going to show you, this shows you a little bit of the way the reorder tool works. So I'm going to expand the reorder container that I had here. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you the reorder. So I, what I really want is this item description to appear next to the item number. So we're going to select it and then just move it up the list. All right. And now when I run run this workflow, you'll see that it'll order it for me where I want it to show up.
okay, there's the item, there's the airframe fasteners, the uh, 4111 is the button, the bolt nut package, shielded cable, all of that, and that should match what's listed here. So here's the bolt nut package, uh, shielded cable listed down here. All right, so very, very quickly, very simply able to show how to do the unions. If you've got two data files where the format's the same, data is different, we can combine them together, replicate the VLOOKUP using the join tool, and then be able to reorder the columns or the fields inside of our data set uh, once we've joined them together. All right, very simple. As always, subscribe to the channel for more content and updates when I release new videos and drop a like, also a comment, and let me know if there are any other videos or any other content that I should be putting together for you. Thanks.